Tonight we're going to be covering second messenger systems. And basically what we're going to have is we're going to have the cell membrane here. We're going to have a receptor in the cell membrane. And this receptor is going to be sensitive to what we call a ligand. And that ligand could be anything. It could be a hormone or an R case. It's going to be a neurotransmitter. And the ligand is just some molecule that fits within the receptor so that when it binds with it, it's going to initiate a whole cascade of events within the cell. And so the first thing that's going to happen is this membrane receptor is going to be connected to a protein that is a peripheral protein on the inside of the cell membrane. And this is called a G protein. And this is going to be the middleman in our entire process here because the G protein will be activated when the ligand binds the receptor. And so once the ligand binds the receptor, the receptor then will activate the G protein. And the G protein will then activate some kind of an enzyme. And the enzyme is going to create our second messenger. And then the second messenger can, could be something very simple, like taking ATP, and converting it into cyclic AMP. This is one of the most common second messengers we'll see. And this cyclic AMP then can go all over the cell and it can do things like increase metabolic activity. It can phosphorylate or turn on other enzymes and it can cause all kinds of things to happen within the cell. And at the same time, it can go and bind with channels inside the cell and open them from the inside thus allowing ions in and out for other things to pass through the channels. So basically what we have is a cascade of event that starts with our first messenger, which is our ligand, which will bind our receptor, which will then activate the G protein, which will then activate an enzyme. In this particular ax, uh, Example, that enzyme is called adenylate cyclase or adenyl cyclase. You'll see it both ways. Adenylate cyclase, I'll put C for short. And adenylate cyclase is the enzyme that is going to convert our ubiquitous adenosine triphosphate molecule into cyclic AMP. Cyclic AMP is then acting as what we call the second messenger, and it's going to go around the cell as a signaling molecule and do all kinds of things like activate enzymes, open channels from the inside, and so forth. And what is really interesting about this particular system is that we have a cascade effect and we have an amplification effect because one first messenger binding with one membrane-bound protein, activating one G protein, can activate lots of enzymes. Uh, and that adenylate cyclase can then create lots and lots of cyclic AMP, which can then go all over the cell and do these things. So this is an amplification effect. Now I've shown you one very ubiquitous example of a second messenger system. This is one, this is one of the first ones that we study. In reality, there are many second messenger systems. Sometimes the second messenger is cyclic GMP. Sometimes the second messenger could be calcium. There are many, many second messengers and many, many second messenger systems, but this is one of the most common ones that we see and one of the first ones that we study. So once again, we have our first messenger, which is a ligand coming in from outside the cell, is going to bind with a membrane-bound receptor. If the cell does not have the receptor for the ligand, it won't get the message. So this is one of the key things, is that the cell must have a receptor for this ligand. This ligand could be a hormone, it could be a neurotransmitter. It can be some signaling molecule that is going to bind this receptor. The receptor then is going to activate the G protein, which I call the middleman, because it then is going to activate the enzyme that will create the second messenger. In this example, the enzyme that we activated was adenylate cyclase. The second messenger that we created is cyclic AMP. Now we have sort of the analog or the reverse of this particular system, where, for example, instead of activating adenylate cyclase, we could activate something called phosphodiesterase instead. And phosphodiesterase, what happened to my little paper towel? Oh well, phosphodiesterase is basically also an enzyme, but it has the reverse effect. So instead of creating 
ATP, or sorry, cyclic AMP from ATP, phosphodiesterase, phosphodie, I'm going to abbreviate it, phosphodiesterase instead is going to convert cyclic AMP, our active second messenger, is going to convert it into simply AMP, which is the non-cyclized form, and it's going to deactivate the second messenger system, and then it's going to deactivate, or I should say reduce, the intracellular activity of our second messenger system. So we can see both of these systems at play, and this is one example of a second messenger system that goes through a G protein, and what we call a G protein coupled second messenger system. We have another type of second messenger system that actually works quite interestingly in that if we have something that is lipid soluble, for example, dissolved gases, and there are two dissolved gases that come to mind. We have carbon monoxide, and we also have nitric oxide. And either one of them, nitric oxide or carbon monoxide, can simply diffuse through that lipid bilayer. And what it will do is it will turn on enzymes that then create second messengers. which then diffuse through the cytoplasm, and just like we saw with cyclic AMP, they can activate other enzymes, and they can open channels from the inside and so forth. So that is a brief overview of how second messenger systems work.